What is up YouTube? Venthros here coming back at you for tutorial video number 10 for RPG Maker. What are we going to do today? Today we are going to we are going to create a very simple intro cutscene. So just imagine you're starting a new game. Most new games have a cutscene that takes place. This is going to be a very watered down, a very simple one. But using the techniques I'm about to show you, you'll be able to make it whatever you want. So let's go ahead and get started with that. The first thing you'll notice is that I have a blank map up here. So if you uh, want to create a new map, just right click the project, create a new map, uh, use all of the defaults, uh, default size, and name it like intro cutscene or intro cut like I have, whatever you want, and just leave everything else alone. That's the first thing we want to do. The next thing we want we want to do a few things in the database. Okay, the first thing that we want to do in the database is we want to reassign the starting position of our main actor. If you've been following along, you will know that our actor by default will pop up on the field map right here. That is where. I this is where we put them in the database you can reassign this and we want to reassign it to this new intro cutscene map okay so you do that by going to the database going oh my god sorry about that I'm going over here to system and right here is going to be the starting positions alright player number one is our player playable character go ahead and click the dots and you will see the list of maps go over here to intro cut and I'm gonna put put them right down here so just double click wherever you want them and that's good for the starting position the next thing you wanna do is you wanna set transparency to on you don't wanna see the actual playable character while the cutscene is playing so we're gonna go up here to options and check the transparent on checkbox Cool, and that's all we have to do for the database for this cutscene. So now you'll see our number one actor, who you will remember is Eric, is down here on this map, and that's where he'll start. If we were to start this right now, if we were to test it, you would see a blank screen. This the the blue screen here would be totally black, and you wouldn't see him. Okay. So far, pretty easy. What we're gonna do for this intro cutscene is we're just gonna have a man standing in the center of a black screen and he just says a few things and he's gonna ask you for your name and I'll show you how to do the name processing pretty standard cutscene I mean obviously you can build off of this and go wherever you want but uh, for the purposes of this tutorial we're gonna keep it really simple so let's create a new event right here that's about the center of the screen maybe maybe here I don't know uh, we'll go here, double click. Uh, we will call this intro. Choose a graphic. I'm going to use the spiritual gra uh, set of graphics. And I'm going to use this old man looking guy right here. It's probably some kind of godlike character. I don't know. Okay. Uh, we want the trigger to be auto run. Okay, as soon as we start this new game, we want this event to start. Okay, so next thing we want to do is start building the actual commands. Actually, let me turn off the walking animation. Sorry about that. All right, so the first thing we want to do is play some music. Um, feel free to kind of play whatever you want. Um, I already have a. Uh, song that I want to use I'm gonna use dungeon 2 and that's the song we're gonna use for that now that we have the music playing we're gonna use something that we haven't used yet in any of the other previous tutorial videos we're gonna use the wait command so go to the second page of your event commands hit wait Okay, so basically what's going on here is every 60 frames is one second, if that makes sense. So 
uh, we're going to set this to 120 seconds. So it waits two seconds before our first text event. All right. So you can make them say whatever you want, but for the purpose of this tutorial, we're just going to have them ask for the player's name. So go to the first page, show text. We'll change. We'll use the spiritual graphic for this guy right here. And tell me your name. So after we do the text event, we're going to do a name processing event. Okay. Um, you know, I, this is a pretty standard RPG kind of feature where you get to name your own characters. So go to the third page and go to name input processing. It's going to ask you whose name do you want to change. And since we're using actor one, Eric, this is the person that we want to change. And feel free to, uh, you can leave the max character six. I like, to, I like to do eight. I don't know, it's just me, but make it whatever you want. Hit OK. Now a window is going to pop up asking for the player to rename the character. So now, after uh, after we do that, we're going to wait for another second. So we're going to throw in another wait command. Second page. We'll wait for one second this time. And now I'll show you something cool you can do with the show text command. Uh, we're going to have him use the player's name. And since we don't know in advance what the player is going to name their character, there's a command that you can type in the text box. And if you actually hover over the text box, this huge tooltip will pop up and it will tell you how to, how to name certain things. Change the color of certain text. You know, some games use uh, town names and important things that people say. They change the colors, so forth and so on. Um, we are going to use the name command, and you're going to use a backslash, which is right above your enter key, not the forward slash, okay, that you would normally type in for websites and stuff, backslash. We're going to use a capital N, and then we are going to put, start a bracket, and you put the actor number inside the bracket. So in this case, we're using actor one, which is Eric or whatever the player renames them to. So that's the command. Backslash N, some brackets with a one inside. Obviously if you're using character two, make it a two, so forth and so on. So it's going to say that. Then we'll say you are the chosen one. I don't know, whatever, whatever you want. It, you know, the content of the text uh, really doesn't matter. It's just getting you in the habit of of doing it and knowing how to uh, how to implement these things. So now, uh, now that we now that we have all of this done, we're ready to leave this cutscene. Okay, we're going to end this cutscene, and for the purpose of this tutorial, to save time, we are just going to transfer the player back to the field map where he was before we made this cutscene. Uh, normally, it, for a cutscene like this, maybe somebody will wake up in bed or something like that. Uh, you can do that. Um, I'm just going to show you how to move the scene to a different place. And then you can you know, do with it whatever you want. So, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to transfer the character back to the field. Okay. So, transfer player under page 2. We're going to do a direct designation. Click the dots and you're going to get this screen again. And we'll do the field. We'll put them right there. So when the cutscene ends, he's going to pop up there on the field. Uh, we're going to do facing down. And hit OK. So that'll take care of that. And as you recall, the player has been transparent this whole time so we need to make we need to turn the transparency off and you do that with another event command which is under the second page under character and we want to turn transparency 
off. So now the character will be standing in the field map like before. And now all we have to do is end this event. And in this case we are going to use a self switch. So go to page one, control self switch, we're going to turn on self switch A. And this, you know, you should know this by now, we're going to create a new event page. We're going to use the condition that self switch A is on and that is it. Our cutscene is finished. Let's test it out. So there he is. Tell me your name. Now the name screen pops up. Uh, we'll name him Bob. Hit OK. He's going to say, Bob, you're the chosen one, just like we wanted him to. And then, bam, we're at the field map like before. So just use that as a way to uh, start your game. And, uh, you know, feel free to experiment and play around with it. Keep in mind, like in the last, uh, in Tutorial 7 when we did the other cutscene, if you want to include any movement, then you're going to have to do two separate events in your cutscene. You're going to have to have the event for the character that's talking and then another event that controls the movement. Easy enough. So, hopefully uh, you have a better understanding of how to implement a very simple cutscene. It's not that hard. If I can do it, you can do it. Um, I want to thank you guys again for your support. I'm actually excited to announce that uh, you know I'm going to start expanding the channel to not only include RPG Maker VX Ace tutorials, but I'm also going to include some... Uh, I'm really into retro gaming, uh, so I might include some videos like that. And uh, I'm also working on a website where all the tutorials that I'm doing uh, here on YouTube, I'll be able to have them on a website so you can follow it step by step with text and things like that. So I'm really excited about both of those things. Uh, if you actually need a copy of RPG Maker VX Ace, uh, you know, if you're watching these videos, I assume you have it. But if you need a copy of it, go ahead and click the link in the description and go ahead and get yourself a copy. I highly recommend it. And uh, that's really all I have for you today. So until next week, I'm Venthros. Uh, keep an eye on future videos, not just about this, but about other retro video game related topics as well. And I'll see you next week.